What's up guys, Justin here, and I'm going to briefly go over the runes I think that I'm going to be running for Shaco in Season 8. So, for those of you not interested in listening to the explanation, feel free to just copy this rune page right here. I take Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Absolute Focus, and Scorch. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about why I'm taking these. The state of Shaco in the game is such that Shaco operates as a champion that doesn't contest other early game junglers, such as S tier junglers, including uh, Lisa and Rek'Sai, and S plus tier junglers, including Elise and Nidalee, because those are six spell junglers that you can't 1v1. He doesn't contest the A tier junglers, which are low cooldown junglers, which are pretty much Ezreal, Kha'Zix, Olaf. So he falls into the B tier category, where he's sort of like able to fight other junglers that don't have high cooldowns and more than four, more than three or four spells, such as Sejuani or Gragas. But he operates in such a different way than Sejuani or Gragas because uh, Sejuani or Gragas want to um, scale and be able to pick in the mid and late game, while Shaco also wants to be able to scale and be able to pick in, pick in the mid and late game. But the way he does that is a little different because he's resource heavy. So Shaco really needs to get to the three item point which is going to be uh, picking up the Infinity Edge third. My standard build right now is Tiamat, Mobis, Static, IE, Dustblade, LDR, swap Static for Trinity Force after finishing Ravenous Hydra, get an Elixir, and that's pretty much it. Uh, picking up Pink Wards along the way. Don't pick up Pink Wards if you're below D5, probably. And that's what I'm looking to do. So I can one-shot someone at the Infinity Edge marker. Now, what you should be looking to do on Shaco is trying to gather resources in snowball lane scenarios for the majority of the early game if you can. You can't really contest the A and S tier junglers, but you can play around them. Go for cross map plays and uh, look for scenarios where you can snowball the early game. Now that you've made it to the mid game, you want to see what masters are best for the mid game. So, the goal of the room page is to accelerate early game potential if you do start to snowball, where as if you don't, you still have decent runes to pick up in the mid and late game. So I'm going to go over the parts that I'm taking, and I'm going to then talk about honorable mentions of other runes that you could have picked up. So Electrocute, hitting a champion with three separate attacks or abilities in three seconds deals bonus adaptive damage. Three seconds is more than enough to proc this, and it works with auto, 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 E, auto, alt, E, auto, alt, auto. Um, I've tried this in custom, so making sure that it works. When we look at the path it takes, we have to compare it to these other two. We have to compare it to Predator, which adds an active effect to your boots that grants large boost of move speed, causing your next ability or attack to deal bonus adaptive damage. And Dark Harvest, champions, large monsters, minions, drop soul essence, and you can translate this into adaptive damage and attack speed, apparently. So uh, for those of you that don't know what adaptive damage is, adaptive damage is just a way of saying AD or AP, right? If you build more AD, you're going to get bonus AD. And if you build more AP, you're going to get more bonus AP. Adaptive is just a way of saying that. So Electrocute is going to do um, 50 base damage, uh, plus per level, plus this ratio, and a high cooldown, right? You won't really need to do more picks than that. If you're in the late game, then you're probably not picking this often anyway, uh, because you pretty much want to solo pick with ult or on a low HP target, in which case it doesn't matter, you probably don't need Electrocute. Um, but Predator, the reason why people th might think Predator is good is because, oh, it has high value for these picks that could happen in the late game. But you want to build for the early game. So Predator enhances your boots. So number one, you have to have boots already. Two, uh, channels for 1.5 seconds out of combat to gain 45% move speed for 15 seconds. Sure. Damaging attacks or abilities end this effect. So you can't kite them down after you get this burst of move speed after you do your first auto. Additionally, you only get this damage, you only get to deal this damage if you prop, if you use it, which means you already have to have boots. Cooldown is pretty high, so it's roughly 2x your ult cooldown in the late game, which uh, doesn't make it too efficient, and starts the game on cooldown. So Predator is basically zero value until your first base, and you don't really want to pick up that because it has zero value. 
Um, Dark Harvest, champions, large monsters, blah, blah, blah. Last 20 seconds. So basically, if you're doing a level 3 gank, you're doing blue, wolves, red. The only last soul you'll have has been the red buff. And that's only going to do 2 extra soul essence damage, right? So you have your 40 damage uh, plus per level at level 3. So if we roughly estimate the math, the difference between 80 and 40 is 40. And uh, divide that by 17, which is the amount of levels you have to go up, because you start at level 1. Uh, so at level 3, you're getting roughly five more eight, five more bonus damage on this, right? So you're going to do 45 damage plus the 2 from here. So you're going to do 47 damage. Whereas here, you're already starting off with a base of 50. And 220 minus 50 divided by the 17. So you're getting 10 damage per level here. So at le for level 3 gank, you're going to be doing 70 damage here with ex uh, execute electrocute and you're going to be doing roughly 47 damage with your hit with dark harvest additionally you're on a timer with dark harvest so it's pretty much a no-brainer on why you're taking electrocute cheap shot uh deals bonus tree damage to enemies with impaired movement speed that's pretty good taste the blood heals when you damage an enemy champion that's pretty useless since you're an assassin you don't really care about your health value too much gains a burst of lethality and magic penetration when using a dash leap blink teleport or when leaving stealth that's what we're going to be taking so let's look at it Obviously, we're going to not give a damn about Taste of Blood. You don't really care about healing because you're an assassin. So, um, when we compare Cheap Shot and Sudden Impact, right? Cheap Shot is going to do uh, 12 to 30 damage based on level. So, we'll set the marker at a level 3 gank, right? If you're doing a level 3 gank, um, how much you're getting per level is 1.05 times 2 plus the base damage. That's This is the damage that Cheap Shot is going to get you on a proc at level th in a level 3 gank, right? So the cooldown is 4 seconds. So you're not going to be proccing the impaired movement of your E um, with your first auto, obviously. But you're going to get it with your second auto or with your shiv. So I tested it in a custom game, and it does work that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your first auto, and then you're going to probably try and auto again, and then shiv. Um, your second auto is going to be the one that deals the cheap shot damage of roughly 14, and then your shiv is going to do the electrocute damage. So you're getting roughly 14 damage from cheap shot. Let's look at sudden impact. Sudden impact after exiting stealth or using a dash or leap. So what this means is that um, Shaco Q counts as a blink, but because they put or here, after exiting stealth you're going to be able to get the sudden impact damage, right? For five seconds. And five seconds is more than enough time. So let's compare the auto auto E again, right? So with two autos at level three, you're level three, that means the laner is probably at level two, you're going to be getting roughly seven armor penetration, ten lethality, roughly translates into 7 armor penetration, right? So, uh, without running straight through the math, that's going to be like 7 AD. Probably a little better. So, you're going to be getting 7 AD on your first auto, 7 AD on your second auto, which is 14 damage, so you're already breaking even, and then your shiv is going to do the 8 extra magic penetration damage. This is before actual true calculation, right? Because uh, when, in the early game, people have less armor, it's going to value, it's going to have a higher value. So, Sun Impact is an easy take. I don't need to run the math for it. It's pretty easy. Your break even is already higher than Cheap Shot. The only way Cheap Shot has a higher break even value is if you get to proc it twice, right? So, in the early game, Shaco's attack speed is somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. So, if you somehow get auto, a second auto to proc Cheap Shot, um, two more autos, and a fifth, and then your Shiv, then you're going to be proccing Cheap Shot twice, roughly. Because uh, it goes on cooldown after your second auto, two more autos, and a shift. That's roughly four seconds based on the attack speed. So if you think you can get four autos and then a, a late shiv, you can proc cheap shot twice. That's going to be 14 times two, which is roughly 28 damage. But at the same time, that's going to be seven times four, right? Lethality four times. That's already 28 and then plus extra magic penetration damage. So in reality, Cheap Shot is going to be worse than Sun Impact for Shaco. Um, zombie Ward. After killing a ward, a friendly Zombie Ward is raised in its place. When your ward drops, they also reanimate. This says uh, no damage value. Don't take this if you're below, uh, I guess, gold. Because people don't look at the map anyway until plat, I guess. Um, gold plat. Um, you can take this at higher elo, but um, you don't really need this ward if you're 
tracking properly, right? You should be playing around laners being missing, and you should be able to read the enemy jungler. Although we are going into the jungle change of the CS counter difference, so we'll see how that pans out. When you enter Brush Apora appears, it will stay behind you to give you vision. That's fine, but you don't really need that vision for anything. Why do you need that vision? Because when they walk in, the Poro disappears anyway. If an enemy enters the brush with a Poro in it, it scares them away. So, right, it, it kind of just tells you if they go there. But again, it's the same thing as Zombie Ward. You you can probably track. So, the easy take is Eyeball Collection. Collect eyeballs from champions and war takedowns. Gain adaptive 0.6 AD and 1 AP per Eyeball Collection. This is pretty easy. Shaco's not a champion that goes to Tracker's Knife in solo queue anyway. So... You don't really care about vision as much as you should if you are a more competitive pick. Unique takedowns grant permanent healing from ability damage. You only have one source of ability damage, two with W, and you don't really care about healing. Unique takedowns grant permanent active CDR. The only active item you're going to have is Tiamat, and you only need one rotation of that anyway. Because if you look at 10% down, that's going to put it to 9 seconds with additional 0.6, right? Like you're never going to get this low enough in a one combo burst scenario to matter. So the easy take is Relentless Hunter. Gains 8 out of combat move, movement speed, plus 8 per bounty hunter stack, and earn stack when you take down enemy champions. Super easy take. When we talk about what secondary tree you're going to get, you're going to go into Sorcery, and you're going to pick up Absolute Focus. While above 70% HP, gain Adaptive Damage. So... Um, so adaptive damage is pretty much the highest extra damage you're going to be able to get. Um, you should be high health value in a majority of situations because you should be playing around scenarios that you're getting damaged since you're so squishy anyway. You're When you're on Chaco, you're pretty much always either 100 HP or dead anyway. So in the mid game, that is. And out of the jungle, you're going to be 70% health. So I mean that at level 3. So it's going to give you 24 uh, AD here, which is just like pretty pretty simple take at, at level 18. And if you do the math, it's going to be uh, 24 divided by 17, which means you're getting 1.4-ish AD per level. For level 3 gank, you're picking up 380. Right? It's nice. And you're going to pick up Sorcery, which is a pretty, pretty easy take. Your next ability hit. Sets champions on fire, dealing 30 to 60 bonus magic damage after one second. So this is pretty much your shiv hitting them prox scorch. And it's a 20 second cooldown, so it's pretty standard cooldown. So now we have to look at honorable mentions, right? Let's look at what could you have taken alternatively if you choose to play Shaco in an assassin style. Um, grasp, you know, you don't care about increasing your max health, really. Like, when I'm looking at these, I'm thinking of how do I maximize value, right? Is this a rune that's going to maximize value for me? So you don't want to be in combat a long time in the first place. Um, you don't have high max health because you're not building tanky. You don't really need to heal because you're an assassin. And you don't really care about your health value at all. Um, bad. Not bad, but like not what you want to do. If you're playing a tank Shaco, then I can't help you. right? After immobilizing enemy, you don't have any immo immobilizing tools. Guards, allies, no, you're picking by yourself. I'm just going to run through these. On flinching, after casting a summer spell gain, blah, blah, blah. Um, why do you need tenacity and slow resistance? You're going to die anyway. Um, for each spell and cooldown, you get tenacity. Well, if your spells, un again, don't get picked off in the first place. Right? You're an assassin. You don't need tenacity. Charge a powerful attack against towers. Uh, so this is only against towers. It's mostly for laners. You get no value from this, except, except in split push, but you don't want to take it for later because you want runes for early. Font of life impairs movement speed, marks them. Ally champions to attack mark enemies, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're not really around ally targets since you're making picks in the mid and late game. Uh, it does have some value for lane gank scenarios because you impair the movement speed and then you, you know, in the gank, your ally champion is going to heal. But you don't really care about them healing as much as you do killing the target in a gank. Unless it's a 2v2, in which case you should have evaluated that it could be a 2v2 and you should evaluate that you win or lose in the first place. Gain 5 armor, you don't take that much damage in the jungler, and you don't care about it that much after. You don't really 1v1 junglers because you're shitty at 1v1ing, except against tank junglers, which you auto-win sometimes. Uh, you don't really buy consumables. You don't care about this. You don't really buy consumables. After 10 minutes, well, it's RA after 10 minutes. What does this guy do for me after 10 minutes? Vitality, 
uh, you don't build max health, low value. Shields and shields on you are, again, you're either 100 or 0 HP. Um, after taking damage from any champion, heals you for 4% your missing health. Your missing health is a low value, and if you're taking damage, you're probably going to die. The minion comes along. We already talked about all of these. Um, precision comes along, right? So precision, hitting enemy champion with three consecutive basic attacks, deals, blah, 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 and makes them vulnerable from all sources. So to get maximum value from this, you want to hit three autos, right? Which means you have to have some type of an attack speed built. And you want everyone, your four teammates, to attack them from all sources, right? You're never going to get that, right? Shaco doesn't go into a scenario in a team fight in a 5v5, get three autos off to maximize this value to allow one to proc this and two to get everyone else to follow up on you. Shaco is not the engager, right? You are not a tank, you are not an engager, you can't run this reliably. Unless you're going in attack speed tank build, which is really weird, and you might as well play something else. 1.5 seconds after damaging a champion, gain blah, 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 attack speed. You don't care about this attack speed after damaging a champion because you burst them. Attacking and moving builds energy. Sure, energized attacks heal you. You don't care about your health value. Grants you move speed. Healing 60% is effective. So the only thing you really get from this is this plus 30% move speed for one second, like a Storm Raider proc. But this is your keystone. So would you prefer this or being able to take all of this, right? Plus, you already get the 8 move speed right away. When you consider the 8 move speed you get right away uh, versus the plus 30% move speed, sure, it's less, but it gets you there in the first place. And the 30% move speed to run away doesn't really matter, right? If you were going to get away, you were going to get away anyway a lot of the time because it's a pick. And if you needed it to run away, then... You're probably the type of player who ran Storm Raiders last season instead of Thunderlords, then I don't have anything to say to that. Overheal, excess healing, don't give a damn. Restores 15% your health, don't give a damn, and grants 25 gold. Like, you kill someone and you're getting 25 more gold. Is that really, really worth it when you don't even get this value? For 5 seconds after gaining a level, take down any mana, you, you should be able to mana manage. Um, gains 3% attack speed. Um, after proccing legend, like this is farm heavy, right? This means that you have to get your legend stacks. It means you have to kill these epic monsters, large monsters, creeps, etc., to get these values. It's not an early game stat; it's a late game stat. And you don't really care about tenacity. You don't really care about attack speed, and you don't really care about life steal. Combat, coup de gras is pretty good. Uh, deals for 10% more damage to champions that have less than 40 health, so this will allow you to do a little bit more damage. Additionally, takedowns grant. Adaptive bonus of 980 or 15 AP for 10 seconds. But this is weird, right? Because if you're taking down someone, then you've already taken them down, right? You're not going to be able to take down multiple people within a 10 second period. Your Q isn't even that low of a cooldown. So you're not actually getting value from this part of it at all. Uh, but you're kind of getting some value from Ruthless. Deals 4% more damage to champions who are 150 more max health than you, increasing 10% at 2k max health in you. Max health in you. Um, this is only if you're fighting tanks, but you shouldn't really be fighting tanks because you should be picking carries. Last stand deals 5-12% to increased damage to champions while you're below 60% health. Um, you, that's a really weird health value to be at on Shaco. You're either 100 or 0 a lot of the time. Max damage game at 30. So yeah, this is, this is not going to happen. This is so situational. This is so situational and probably not going to happen. Uh, this is... You don't even get value from this, and coup de gras is okay, but it, it gets honorable mention. Sorcery, um, summon airy, your attacks and abilities send airy to a target, dealing damage or shielding allies. Um, airy cannot be sent out until she returns, so you really only get one airy proc in a gank scenario. This is just what I'm telling you. I tested that out in a custom game. And that's going to be 20 damage. Um, you don't have a shield at all, so you're not even getting value from this part of it. But you're basically saying, okay, for my keystone, I'm going to be doing 20 plus the difference in damage, right? So if the difference between 60 and 20 is 40, then divide by 17, you're getting times 2 at level 3. So for your level 3 gank, you're getting 25-ish damage with Aerie versus 8 move speed that you might be able to get another auto attack off with because you've got 8 extra move speed. Um, additionally, this is a keystone, so if you take this, then you have to take 
other sorcery parts, and we have to, we'll look into that. Hurricane Comet. Uh, this is better, right? This is just going to be more damage. It's going to be 30 plus the base difference. So it's going to be 100 minus 30, if I was 17, times 2 for your level 3 gank, plus the 30. So for your level 3 gank, you're going to get 38 extra damage, plus your ratio here. Um, you know, it's not bad. Arcane Comet is not bad. Uh, phase rushing an enemy with 3 attacks or separate abilities grants extra move speed. You don't really care like to get away. if you're. It's effectively like Storm Raiders. But would you pick Storm Raiders over Thunderlords, which is damage effectively? I wouldn't. Artifact, when you take magic damage, that would reduce your health below 30, gains a shield. Uh, you shouldn't die anyway in the first place. Uh, every 60 seconds, your next ability uses its mana, cost refund, you don't care. You have blue buff in the early, and you should mana manage. Your ultimate's cooldown is reduced by 5 seconds each time you cast ults. You... Like, this is nice for picks, because the more ults you have in the mid and late game, the more picks you get. So ultimate hat gets a little bit of credit. And Arcane Comet gets a little bit of credit here. Excellence gain 10% CDR when you reach level 10. Each percent of CDR exceeds CDR limit is converted to adaptive bonus of 1.2 um, This is negligible, right? You're never going to get like 60% CDR and get 20, uh, 20 times 12. 20 times 1.2 is going to be like 15 extra 80. It's really not worth it. You don't build that much CDR at all in the build I described, and 10% CDR isn't going to make or break a difference. You might be able to queue in for a pick quicker, but it's a one-second differential. I guess Transcendence does get some honorable mention. Celerity gets honorable mention, gains 4% move speed, and adds 8% of your bonus move speed to your AP or AD adaptive. So you're going to gain 4% move speed right away, right? So remember, Shaco's base move speed is 350. Your times 0.04, you're going to get 14 move speed, which is not bad, don't get me wrong. And then 8% of your bonus move speed. So um, you're going to add the 8 you get from the keystone from the Dominion Tree, plus the 350, right? And then 8% of your bonus move speed to your AD or AP. So uh, the difference is 22, right? Um, so you're going to multiply this by 22, or... 0.08 is the bonus ratio, and you're going to get 280, right? So it's not bad. You're going to get 280 from this. It's it's pretty good. But we talked about absolute focus, and this is going to give you 380 in the level... This is going to give you 380 in the level 3 gank. This is going to give you 280 in the level 3 gank. Uh, this this will give you the move speed, and we have to look at how this scales, right? So I look at how this scales. We're at the 350 plus the 22 that we had plus the uh, 130 from Mobius, plus the uh, 0.05 from Static or Triforce, right? So 502 times 0.05, right? And then add back the 502. So this is probably going to be the maximum move speed that you're looking at, right? But how much of this is the bonus move speed? Well, let's subtract the 350, multiply this by 0.08, and at max, full build, the extra 80 you're going to be getting is 14. Right? Would you rather max get 24 or max get 14? Right? In a level 3 gank, would you rather have 380 here or 280 here? Now granted, the 4% move speed could make a difference, right? It could maybe get you an extra auto attack, it could do all these things. But for security reasons, 80 is going to be better than move speed as a universal stat. But it gets honorable mention. Power. Scorch we already talked about, it's just flat damage, pretty easy. Gains 25% move speed. Uh, 25 move speed and adaptive bonus when in river. Uh, too situational. You don't know if you're going to be fighting in river or in lane. Too situational. Gathering every 10 minutes. This is for scaling, right? So not good enough. Um, inspiration is the last one. Unlock spellbook. Gains a summoner shard at 2 minutes. Um, and you can exchange one summoner shard to, resplay, uh, to replace. Summoner spells with a different one. Cooldowns are reduced by 25% in general. Uh, smite doesn't work, and you can't have two of the same. So the fact that smite doesn't work means that you can't swap out both of your summoner spells in the first place. This is bad, because now you're only getting half the value. Um, additionally, I went into game, and I was like, oh, does it reset my cooldown timer? No. right? If I change Ignite out for Exhaust, it still has the same cooldown timer, so I'd rather have Ignite over Exhaust. Do you care about Flash? Um, it's nice, but I'm not going to pick Flash over Ignite. You might want to switch off Ignite for Flash in the late game, which, is, which could be useful, right? So Unsealed... 
Spellbook gets honorable mention because Ignite doesn't matter that much in the late game. You should be able to one-shot them in the late game anyway. Flash is probably more important in the late game to get away or to get in. It gets honorable mention. Glacial Augment, basic attacking a champion slows him for two seconds, so that sounds good for us, right? Um, range attack slow, blah, blah, blah. Melee attack slow more. Okay, good. Slowing a champion with active items shoots a freeze ray through them. Freezing the nearby ground for 5 seconds, slowing all units. So you don't really have an active item that slows on your Shaco build. Um, Dustblade doesn't count as an active item. I tested it out. So this is pretty much for the lane phase. If you want to uh, think about how slow stack, right? Basic attacking a champion slows them for 2 seconds. But you already have an inbuilt slow. If we look at Shaco... Um, the way slows work is that slows take the highest slow and apply it, right? So if you're already slowing for 20%, now you're slowing for 40 to 50%. That's a nice increase. Don't get me wrong. But number one, it has no value in the late game because you only person late game. Number two, your laner can run this, so it could be bad if your laner runs it and you run it because you can't stack it, obviously. And three, then you're just not getting value out of your E at, by a default. So you can run Glacial Augment for lane phase. It gets a little bit of uh, merit, but not really. Like, I would never take this scenario. Um, again, the reason why I'm not taking Spellbook is because it doesn't help me in the early game. It just swaps out for a late game scenario that we don't know how it ends up. After using an ability, and you never want to swap them um, until, like, lane phase is ended. After using an ability, your next attack on a champion also grants bonus gold. Yeah, no. Right? You don't get enough champion else. Oh, also, um, you can only really swap this after three items, after IE, because that's when you need flash, because you don't need ignite anymore to kill people. So this, you're never going to get value from this until 25 minutes in the game minimum. Hex flash, when flash on cooldown, just replace the hex flash. Obviously, you don't take flash. Biscuit delivery gains a total biscuit. 15% uh, of your max out the mana, you don't get low in the jungle anyway. And champions, you don't care about this mana region because you have blue in the early. And you should man and manage. So this is nice for laners, but not really for Shaco. Um, you could use the biscuit for fighting in a 2v2 or a 1v1, but uh, if you're using the biscuit for that situation, um, you should have already chosen a situation where you don't need the biscuit to 2v2 or 1v1. Perfect timing. It's basically a Zanya stopwatch that transforms after 6 minutes. You don't really want to be in the middle of a stasis effect for for 2.5 seconds anyway. It just traps you there like GA. Magical footwear. You get slightly magical boots at 10 minutes. You cannot buy boots before then. Um, you really like to buy boots before 10 minutes because you go Moby second. It gives you an additional 10 move speed. It's not worth it. And upgrades to 50 gold. This is not worth it. For Shaco, you want to buy boots earlier on. On first base, usually. You can enter into debt to buy items, a landing fee of 50 gold, and a debt limit of uh, 150. You don't really want to base that early anyway, since your first buy is really 1050. So on your first base, sure, you can put yourself in debt to get your Tiamat or boots, but you don't really... Like, you're not a laner, right? You're not a laner that needs to spike in a scenario. And Tiamat isn't like a super... Like, Tiamat is an item spike, but like, every, you know, you're... The difference between having two long swords and a Tiamat is like negligible because you're just doing jungle camps. Sure, you can do raptors a little better, but that's not really a good enough point. Starting the game with six minutes, you can dematerialize the minions. Yeah, you're not really a laner, and you can pretty much shove it by yourself, right? You don't want to go into lane attacks, and if you're helping them push, then you've already won the situation. If you're farming under tower, then you're farming under tower. Beyond, five percent CD. That's nice. Max CD reduction, sure. Summer soul cooldown, sure. Item cooldown, sure. Honorable mention. Can't really go wrong with it. Approach velocity gains 10 move speed towards nearby ally champions that are movement impaired or enemy champions that you impair. Um, that is good for laners, but if they've already impaired them, they probably started the gank out too early. And uh, you. In the mid and late game, you don't really want to be around ally champions, so yeah. 100 health, you don't give a damn about. 10 less damage to champions, monsters until 10 may mark, bad for your for snowballing. So of all these, uh, Cosmic Insight, um, uh, 
unsealed book, which is pretty bad because, like, no, the reason why I'm not taking this is because they're not early game, right? You don't rotate cooldowns quick enough on Chaco and Ganks. And you don't care about summoner spell reduction because, that, like, it's such a minor window between having it up for three minutes and having it up for uh, 5% of 180 is whatever that is, right? Like, it's such a minor difference that doesn't come into effect. You don't really care about your teammate in a mid or late game rotation. You don't really care about this because this is post-25 minutes. Yeah, you don't want to stack this if your laner has it. Plus, you don't get value from this part of it at all. Um, you're not sure if you're in river all the time. That's not good. Celerity is pretty good, but it's worse than absolute focus, which I take. 10% CDR is good, but not worth it comparatively because you have to choose. Ultimate hat is nice, but not really like worth going into compared to the other parts of the tree, right? Like this is damage. This is damage. This is not damage. Sure, you would like your ult to be up a little more for more mid or late game picks, but you want to play for early first and damage. The damage part of the early game is more important than the the ult part of the mid game. Comet is going to do damage, but it's not worth going into tree because then you would have to take Comet. You would have to take Ultimate Hat, I guess. You would have to take Absolute Focus, and I guess you would have to take Scorch. So let's compare it, right? If I create a new page where I take Sorcery, Take Comet, Hat, Focus, and Scorch. And then I go Dominion here. I'm going to go Sudden Impact. Probably not Eyeball. And I guess Relentless Hunt. Right? Because this doesn't actually give you anything until a point in time, right? So let's compare what we get out of this. Well, we get the 30-ish damage. Um, 70 is the difference divided by 17, so... So we're going to get 34 damage in the initial gank without taking into account bonus AD. So 34 damage plus hat, which comes in later. Plus Absolute Focus, which we have in both scenarios, so it doesn't count. Plus Scorch, which we have in both scenarios, which doesn't count, right? Versus the... Now we have only Sudden Impact and Relentless Hunter. So we're skipping out on Electrocute, which is already base 50 damage. We've already, like, this was 35-ish, right? We've already lost Electrocute damage. We get the sudden impact damage. Uh, we don't get eyeball now, and we get relentless hunter. So, would you rather have electrocute and eyeball collection versus comet, which does less damage than electrocute, for ultimate hat? Not really, right? You want the better early game damage. So, this is not the page you want to run. Like, you would comparatively just run this page. Um, so yeah, and then precision, um, the honorable mention was Coupe de Gras, but you don't just want to go into a tree for one of these things, and plus you don't get all this value, plus oftentimes if they're below 40% health, then you're going to be able to kill them anyway, if you're 100 to zeroing them, then you can 100 to zero them anyway, and resolve, you don't care about any of this shit, it's all health stuff. So... That was my uh, Shaco Season 8 Rune Setup Guide. You take a, uh, Domination, Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Sorcery, Absolute Focus, Scorch, Trend Snowball Early, and then give value through mid-game. Thank you guys for watching.